Here are my top tips for new writers. One of my rules is there are no rules. I'd say that's like my main rule. I think you shouldn't feel like you need to kind of conform to a certain way that the industry is kind of pivoting or what people are telling you to make. I think you do what you want, always have a kind of idea of what it is you want to create and then always stick to that and never try and deviate from it. A lot of my kind of defiance comes from my being in acting. I think for so long I was trying to kind of fit into holes that were there and I didn't necessarily fit. And after a while I kind of didn't work or perform for like two or three years until I came back. And when I came back, I came back with a new kind of energy. I focused on what I wanted to do and it's hard because you end up not maybe working or being in spaces that you think you should be in. But I think there's this thing of betting on yourself. If everyone isn't gonna believe in you, the only person who is is yourself. And you've kind of got to have the confidence in this industry in every sense, writing, acting, producing, everything. You've kind of got to have this boxers almost mentality of, I can do this, I'm the best. Because if you don't have that in yourself and you look for that from other people, it might work, but it could be very, very long. To find your authentic voice, I think you go to the places that made you the person you are and you speak to the people that are there. If ever I've got like a writer's block or anything like that, I'll speak to my friends I went to school with. I'll speak to my mom, my dad, my brother, my nan. She's great. And I'll just go back to that kind of space and that headspace of who I am. Community is really important as a writer. It's such a, um, which I'm learning, it's, it can be a very kind of isolated work. Um, you can be by yourself in your head for a very long time. It's great to have people who you can, you know, text, call, voice note, meet up with for a coffee and just kind of discuss an idea or discuss like a feeling. And often if you do, have a certain feeling and you speak to these people, speak to your peers about it, they're usually sharing something similar. And I think there's something really reassuring in that that can put your mind at ease. I think you can gather a lot of like anxiety by just sticking by yourself in your own head. So yeah, I think community is, it's so vital. It's great to get a second opinion on something, even in the early stages of a draft, even if you have you know, five pages, 10 pages, even if you just have like bullet points, I think it's great because sometimes you you just are in a maze with your brain and you just get stuck at a dead end. And sometimes somebody else can just talk you back on track just off based off even one page of information or dialogue. And I think it's so important to have feedback and people that you can kind of send your work to. It doesn't necessarily have to be a building or like an artistic director or a producer. It can be like a, a friend, it can be like a, a peer or a colleague in any way, shape or form. I'm, I don't wanna say I'm good at dealing with rejection, but I feel like I've dealt with rejection now on a consistent basis for quite a lot of years that I just m move on. I might be attached to it in the moment and then once it's out there, I just forget about it, I move on. But I don't think it ever gets easier. It's always hard. Um, even though I say I deal with it well, I still have times of just pure despair. And it, it never gets easier. And you just need to kind of find your mechanisms for coping, I guess. But I'm not sure. I'm sure there's probably actually a better way of being able to deal with rejection, but this is the best that I've found it the last few years. And yeah, it's a process. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's taken me years to kind of get to a point where I can get a rejection and just go, okay, well, I'll get on with the rest of my day. I think supporting a really bad football team also helped because I'm very used to like disappointment. And there was like a eight year stretch when the football team I supported was very bad. So I was like constantly, I'd go to like the football on a Saturday and come away disappointed. So I was quite used to just the regular kind of flow of disappointment. <laughs> I don't ever consider giving up. It's not something that I've ever really 
thought about I, I always said, like, if I ever said I didn't want to do this again, then something's really wrong with me. One play that every writer should see. Wolverine Techno Makeout Champs, no, I'm joking. I don't think there's maybe a specific right answer to this actually, because I've had people maybe recommend, oh, this is the play that every writer should see or da da da. And it's, it can be like, you know, people who in the industry are regarded as the greats, but they don't necessarily speak to me personally. I think it's very important to kind of find writers who write about the things that you like. And I guarantee you, if you find a writer that writes about the things that you like, they'll have one play that really heavily speaks to you. So I can't give you a play, but I would say to try and find the right writer from your own experiences and what you look for from art. I think I get inspiration from like various different spaces actually. I'm inspired by my peers, like the people that I regard as like around me currently there. I find those people and reading their work really inspiring more so than um, kind of like a writer who wrote a play like 30 years ago. Um, I'm inspired by my friends who are like musicians my friends who are poets, people that I've grown up with for a very long time and have known for so long are creating things in the world and people from all over are streaming their music, listening to their poetry, listening to their art. And I think that's the most inspiring thing that a group of people from where I'm from are able to do that kind of stuff. My granddad always used to say like, don't get too comfortable. And that's, I think that's it really. I just never rest on my laurels. I always, I always kind of make sure that I'm not too, too relaxed basically, which I think is a good thing. It can be a bad thing because it means I never sometimes enjoy like good things when they're happening because I'm always looking onto the next thing, but it keeps me motivated and driven. As long as you're true to your voice and you make sure you get what you want out of the stories you're telling, regardless of what like, you know, fundings and institutions are saying ultimately as long as you're true to yourself you know you can go to sleep at night and feel like good about yourself but as soon as you start to change that to fit the kind of parameters that are being set for no good reason you'll start to I feel like lose the kind of main reason why you wanted to create the work in the first place. From a story there's always something that an audience member can take from it and acknowledge. And if they don't acknowledge it, that's because they're being difficult on purpose. My other bit of advice is I think there's a fine line between, I guess, a procrastination and genuine kind of creative mental fatigue. And I think sometimes there's too much pressure on making sure you write it and you finish it. If you genuinely don't feel like in your heart of hearts that you can do it and being Honestly, truthful with yourself. If you don't feel like you can do it, take a break. Do you know what I mean? Like, like no, life's not gonna go forward too quickly. Just take like a week off, take like a couple of days off. It took me, I, that's how I wrote Ballring Techno Makeout Jams. It took me like nearly four years as a three minute monologue to like a full length play. And that was because I only wrote when I really felt the urge to, and I was, I'm really grateful for that experience and moment, and I'm not always gonna be able to do that, but I never procrastinated when I was writing boring techno makeout jams. I only ever wrote it or started writing when it felt necessary. I think you know when your work is finished, when you're done, like, and I know that sounds like rubbish right? that's like I don't know what do you mean when I'm done but when you physically feel like what else am I gonna do I think that's the perfect moment to finish it and you might even need to finish it a bit before that but once you feel like you've really I guess squeezed the lemon as much as you can then I'd say that's when you're done and I think a good way to kind of realize that is whenever you go into writing anything, kind of have like almost like a line of what it is you want to tell as a story. And once you feel like you've achieved what that line says, I think you're good.
If you've got a story, if you've got a voice, um, I think you're a writer. And if you feel like you want to share that with the world, there's nobody stopping you. There's no kind of thing that's like going to stop you from doing what you want to do and the story that you want to put out there, except for yourself. And if you do have that within you, I think just go for it. Don't let anybody change your mind or don't let anything that's going on within the industry that doesn't really relate to you kind of throw you off. Just always stick to what you know and what you want to do and go for it.